Um, so we do have all four grey apes living here at Twyfgo, so technically you, should, you can see all five um, grey apes. Um, so think of the larger primates without a tail. So of course bonobos, there's chimpanzees as well, orangutans, um, gorillas and ourselves. So humans is the fifth one. Uh, bonobos are our closest living um, relative, chimpanzees are our second. So these guys share over 98% of DNA with us. <laughs> well, they're loving all the food. I think they had a pellet feed as well scattered. So we'll start with the differences between these guys and chimpanzees, if you haven't seen them before. There is a little um, information board on the left-hand side of this wall, and it has two photos on it as well, so you can really compare the difference on it, their looks. Um, so you'll see that these guys are a bit smaller. So when we first discovered bonobos, we actually called them a pygmy chimp. We didn't know too much about them, but we now know, oh, that one's got all the food. <laughs> Gather yeah. it up in hands and feet. Um, we now know that they're a separate species to chimpanzees. So again, they come from one country in Africa, the Democratic Republic of Congo, where we compare in fact to chim chimpanzees come from over 20 different um, countries in Africa. And again, chimps are a little bit bigger in size, they tend to be a bit more stockier in appearance, these guys a bit more slender. And the hierarchy is slightly different. You may already know with chimpanzees you have the alpha male in the group and then the males are below in their own hierarchy and also females. With bonobos it's actually female led, you have a female hierarchy so you have the dominant female but every female is above every male. Um, so we do have like the smaller family groups in the two groups and our keepers do switch individuals or little family groups around the two groups and um, this is because of an uh, behavior they express out in the wild called fission fusion and you'll see this in chimpanzees too so they have the larger groups uh, and then they split into smaller groups it's usually the ones that are uh, kind of like the little friend groups oh, they man. venture off and go and forage with each other then come back together at the end of the day so our keepers um, throughout the month they'll switch individuals <laughs> around of course just like us they get on um, better with some individuals and not so well with the others but we do call them the lovable um, grey ape. No. <laughs> so if we ever switch a female uh, round and she does have sons, and we'll also switch the sons around with her. So out in the wild, um, the sons will always stay warm with mum throughout their life. So again, mixed females and males in both groups. You might see some juveniles as well. We do have a couple of youngsters, which is fantastic as they are an endangered species. They say they're our closest living relative. They are classed as endangered. So later on in the talk, I'll mention of ways we can help these guys out. But back towards those behaviours, lots of foraging behaviour happening. Um, a little bit about their diet. So they are classed as omnivores, so they do eat different types of food out in the wild. They're also classed as a seed disperser, so this means when they're eating lots of different kinds of fruit out in the wild, of course they have to go to the toilet, and if there's any seeds in their poo, the poo acts like fertiliser and you might get some new plants growing. So fantastic for other species in the future and also a bit of coverage on the forest floor as well, so they have that need to hide away. Yeah. All the food that they'll eat, things like leaves, buds, flowers, and also insects. So being an omnivore, very mixed um, diet. So little insects. They do also say that if they're able to catch them, they are um, um, able to eat things like smaller birds and also smaller mammals and rodents as well. Here, as you can see, lots of lettuces everywhere. Um, so lots of healthy vegetables for our grey apes and other primates. They do get their own kind of special kind of pellet, or you can call it a biscuit. They'll either get a smaller pellet or what we call a protein biscuit. So because they, we don't really give the meat as such um, to them, they get their protein source, or a lot of their protein source, I should say, in those biscuits. And then, of course, enrichment um, weather dependent. So because it's quite nice and sunny today, they've had some ice cubes. So that's probably got a bit of squash or a little bit of like sweeter, especially fruit inside of it. <laughs> also, so we mentioned a few differences um, from chimpanzees. So if you do, uh, did 
noticed any of that before. Um, they're a little bit different on where they come from. Only one country in Africa for bonobos. Over 20 different countries for chimpanzees where you would find them in Africa. And the hierarchy is slightly different. Females above males with our bonobos. But if you look closely at a bonobo, you'll see that they've most likely got a centre hairline. Um, so hair parting through the centre which chimpanzees don't have, and they do also have quite pink lips as well that chimps are lacking. So we heard a few noises before, um, again, slightly different to chimps. So chimpanzees, they communicate um, with a lots of different noises, lots of hoots especially. Um, they bang quite a lot, and that's just because out in the wild, if you can't see each other, the best way to communicate is through noises. So it's the same with bonobos as well. These guys are just at a slightly higher pitch of their noises. <laughs> So other ways that we feed our lovely bonobos, I'll just add this into the talk. Um, I've spotted inside their enclosure that have got some firemen hoses. They've also got a barrel and also um, some firemen hoses that have been made into like a climbing equipment. Um, but pretty much anything with holes inside our keepers can pop food in as well. Um, these being great apes, they do use tools just like we do. So anything from our fingers to sticks as well. Um, our keepers will provide them with what we call browse. So if there's any plants species that are suitable for that animal that's safe for them. So they can potentially eat the leaves, um, sometimes other animals will eat the bark, but they'll also, for great apes, use the actual stick. So at uh, orangutans, they've got an enrichment wall that's got holes in it, so again these guys will take the stick and scoop that wall from there. But anything for our bonobos, again, that's got holes, they can use the sticks to scoop it out. <laughs> they do seem to be uh, liking the sunshine. You might see them sunbathing throughout the day. They'll sit at the bottom, usually on the grass, um, and sit there all day just sunbathe like we do. So a way that we can help our lovely bonobos out, um, supporting lots of different charities. I've mentioned a charity before for our Given the Fawn and Flora. There is a charity that are helping bonobos out, and it's called Friends of Bonobos. Um, so they do fantastic work in research. They actually save individual bonobos if they are orphaned or injured. And they have their own sanctuaries as well. So they're like wild areas that are monitored. So one's called Molia Bonobo and Ecola. Bonobo. Um, but again, they do a lot of um, community engagement as well, so learning all about um, the bonobos, the communities living close by. So supporting these guys, fantastic. Um, go follow them and um, like any post on social media platforms. And our groups are very important as well. So we're the only zoo in the UK to house bonobos at the moment. And so our bonobo groups take up about 10% of the group. So last year we had a couple of individuals join our group and we had a female lead. So this is due to um, having nice healthy genetics in the groups if they do breed here. So we work closely with zoos over in Europe, especially France and Germany, in the USA as well. But other ways that we 